I got a special surprise for y'all today. Red Hatter Piglets. They're trying to get a drink, but Red's in the store's closed position, laying on her belly. Well, I guess she's going to flip over. Hmm. This guy's being belligerent. <laughs> there he goes. There are eight piglets here, and that kind of a sad story, and uh, I guess it's just part of farm life. Red had a litter of 17 piglets a day and a half ago. She had them at night. She started having them at about 7 at night, and she was done at about midnight or so. 17. We were thrilled. Now, she... oh my gosh, she's getting up. Hi, Red. Two of them were stillborn, which is not uncommon with a large litter like that. And one of them was sluggish and died shortly after, so we had 14 piglets. Red has always been a great mom, and we've never worried about her laying on piglets, stepping on piglets. I think she's lost one in her first, this is her fourth litter, she's lost one in the whole litters combined. Well, in the subsequent day, she crushed, um, let's see, 14. She crushed six of them, and I was devastated and felt like when an animal dies, it's under your care, and you feel like you could have done something more. It feels terrible. So Hillary and I beat ourselves up about these things, and... It's hard to put it on YouTube, too, because you get the people that say, I told you so. I've had folks on a lot of previous farrowing videos say, oh, you need a farrowing crate. And I've always said, no, nah, I don't know if it's a good mom. Or you need to build rails against the wall so the piglets can have a way out. And my assumption was that Red is a good mom, and her history had showed that we didn't really need those things until now. And I thought to myself, well... Why did this happen? What was different? And I came up with two things. Number one, this, the bedding that we put down is quite a bit thicker than what we normally use. And the thicker the bedding, the piglets have a little hard time navigating, especially when they got it to get out of the way quickly. When they're very little, they don't, they don't walk around quite so quickly. <laughs> But we put the bedding down because it was about 25 degrees when the piglets were born and we wanted to make sure that it was nice and dry and warm for them. So that could have been one of the things. The other thing is that red has gotten quite a bit bigger. Uh, you know, you would think that a sow would quit growing after the first two years or so, but she's chunkier. It's like her legs look shorter. She's got this big wide mass especially with such a large litter and her udders are huge that I think she's having a harder time seeing where her piglets are and understanding where her body lands when she lays down yes mom I am making a video so we learn lessons these ways and having it on the internet makes it even more difficult to, to put it up because you get the people that say, I told you so. Anyway, what am I going to do? Well, I'm going to put rails along the walls. That's what needs to be done. And I've been thinking about a way to make them so that the sow can't tear them up because pigs are awfully good at taking their snout and lifting up a lot of weight and tearing things apart. So I'm going to weld up a pipe with some standouts made out of angle steel so that I've got that pipe held about six inches or so out of the wall and build it around this corner here so that her piglets can get out of the way. It's too late now, really. I, I would be surprised, although look what I'm saying, if she lays on any more of these because she's got so few of them now. She had so many when she first gave birth. It was so hard to keep track of them all, but with just eight left, 
I think it'll be a lot easier for her. But our other sow brownies do in three weeks or a month, and so I'm going to make sure I have that in place for brownie. Mom falls asleep awfully easy when she has a new litter of piglets. She gets what sleep she can. They're after her 24 hours a day pretty much. But she was just snoring over her here. She laid down and started snoring right away. These guys are voracious when they're little. We'll have these piglets in here for about eight weeks. Um, and through that time, they go through a gradual weaning. Of course, right now they're all on mother's milk. And I counted them up. Red actually has 16 teats, and when she had the 14 to begin with, we thought, oh, there's not enough teats. She has she had enough teats from all. She's got plenty for eight now. They're going to get big fast. Um, so they stay on milk for, I'll start putting in feed after about a week, and I'll put some in a dish on the floor. And being curious, they'll start to nibble at it. And gradually they'll transition to eating more and more feed and water as well so that by the time eight weeks comes they're eating a lot of feed and they're easy to transition off to slop which is a mixture of feed and water when I separate them. This batch of piglets being winter piglets for us will go over in the end bay of the barn to grow out there because the weather here, the ground's frozen, it's cold, it's snowy, it's blowing. I think it's better to keep piglets inside in the winter out of those elements and grow them on a warmer bedding pack. Let me get one of these little guys and I'll talk about how we care for him. And he's probably not going to be happy I'm taking away from his dinner. Hey, little one. <laughs> There's not a lot of what I would call veterinary care required, although we do almost we do almost all the veterinary care here, Hillary and I do. Um, common things that people say need to be done with piglets. Iron shots, we don't do iron shots. Iron deficiency is a thing with some breeds and pigs the way that they're raised and what they're fed. We've never had a problem with iron deficiency, so we don't do iron shots. We don't clip their teeth. Some people think clipping their teeth prevents mainly um, teat irritation in the mom. We've never had much of a problem with teat irritation, so we don't clip their teeth. We do not bob their curly little tail. Show us your curly little tail here. We don't bob their curly little tails because I love them. And they use their tails to show their mood, just like a dog does. When a pig wags its tail, it's happy. And the other thing you'll see uh, done with piglets is their ears get notched by larger hog farms. And they notch the ears to identify what litter the piglet came from if they have multiple sows farrowing at the same time. But we let our guys grow the way they are. And the only thing we do is we castrate the males at two or three weeks old. Depending on size and how fast they're growing, we uh, know when to castrate them. And we do that ourselves. And I think that when it's done that young, they don't remember it. So that's it for piglet care, right, little guy? You want to get back to eating. I'll let you get back to eating. However, this one really wanted his close-up shot. <laughs> I guess he doesn't. I think he wants to get back to eating. I'm bothering these guys too much. It's okay, Mom. Missy's a great mom in more ways than one. She is really friendly and easy to handle for us. And the way that we raise friendly sows is that we get in and handle them right from birth when we're raising a new sow up. Putting your hands on an animal every day is really, I've always thought, key to raising docile animals. She lets us in here when she's given birth, right after she's given birth lets me handle her piglets and she doesn't get upset about it, she's okay. Right Red? You're a good sow, aren't you? Oh, watch out for that piggy. Her piggies are saying, where'd mom go? She left us all alone. We hate that. Mom's going to get a drink. Hey, Red. Yeah. 
The other thing I wanted to cover is, oh, Red, don't mess with the camera. I know you got to come and check it out. Red seems to want to do a walkabout here. I want to cover the cost of buying in feeder peg piglets versus keeping your own brood stock. Now Red's peeing. We, <laughs> we keep 2001 boar and um, you may wonder is that worthwhile versus just buying in feeder piglets. My gosh, he really has to pee. And the answer is yes when you run through the math, at least for us in our case. You're something. So I got my math on this wrinkly little sheet here. And it's starting to get dark outside, but I'll see what I can do. <laughs> I think she wants more camera time. Don't you, Red? You've been on camera before. Oh, jeez. <laughs> you goofball. Maybe I'll stand up and do this. All right, here's how the math works. We need to... Now John's going at it. We feed the, the, each of the sows and the boar about eight pounds of feed per day. Her ration doubles, actually, when she's lactating like this. Eight pounds a day, though, for most of the year. Feeds 20 cents a pound. And so if you add it all up to feed the three of these guys, it costs us $4.80 per day. You just don't want me to make a video here. $4.80 a day, which winds up being about $1,750 a year. Now, if we went out and bought feeder pigs, it would cost us about $75 each for feeder pigs, and that's average. Sometimes of the year they're cheaper. Sometimes they're way more expensive. Like when COVID first hit, piglets were well over $100 for feeder piglets. And a feeder piglet is about an eight-week-old weaned piglet. If I run through the math, if I'm spending $1,750 now, that equates to 24 feeder piglets purchased in a year. In reality, out of our two sows, we get someplace between 32 and 48 piglets because litter size is highly variable. So we're ahead of the game between $600 and $1,800 just through raising our own broodstock. And of course, that's not including the cost for me to build this pig barn and the labor we put into taking care of them. But over the years, we still wind up ahead. And it has additional benefits like we can farrow on our schedule instead of having to go look on the schedule that somebody else is keeping. We can keep track of our genetics better. We can grow the types of animals that we want. And we can ensure our supply, which is a big deal. And without, without the big hog farms around anymore, since pork is vertically integrated as an industry, it's harder and harder to find feeder piglets. So that's the feeder piglet story. Ah, she's finally laid down again. Maybe I can, you know, talk without big giant sows bumping into me. And piglets are actually taking an interest in me too. What's that guy smell like? This video was kind of difficult for me to do because um, when she first had litter, I thought this will make a great video, 17 piglets, an amazing litter, and then having lost over half of them. It's a hard thing to take as a farmer, and, you know, I'm, I had a tough time dealing with it. Um, and like I said, I, I always look back at my decisions and say, did I do the right thing? And working on what I knew at the time about uh, Red's mothering abilities, I think I did make the right decisions. It just, life throws you a curveball, you know, when you think you get the system down, something happens, something comes along and knocks your equilibrium. I guess that the key to success is getting back up and making sure that it doesn't happen again. So we'll take care of that in the way our farrowing pens are set up. I'm going to leave you with just shots of these piglets doing their piglet thing. And it's kind of like pasture therapy. I think it's very relaxing. So I'm going to give you a few minutes of that to close out the video. I hope you have a great Sunday, and I'll see you next time.
These guys over here are just conked out. And then we got the three big eaters over here. They've got the whole range of the buffet, so they're taking advantage of it. <laughs> You've got some vinegar in you. I like this black one. He looks Berkshire and Red's got some Berkshire in it. By the way, the breed of pig we raise is certified mutt. Register them that way, actually. We have Duroc, Black Spot or Old Spot, some Berkshire in our pigs, um, some Yorkshire, Yorkshire, Hampshire. With cows, I always thought purebred was the way to go because of the value of the, the, the cow if you ever decide to sell with pigs. Not so much. I like raising hybrids. Good little guy. It's nice and warm up here, isn't it? <laughs> they have quite a personality right at birth even. They're a lot quieter now than they would be two weeks from now if I picked them up. Well, you got a, you got a mug for the camera here, you know. Yeah. And they smell great. They smell like pine shavings, actually. Don't you? You're missing a meal. I'm surprised you're not complaining more. There he is. Yeah, I'll let you down. There you go. You can go back to dinner. <laughs>